Hi Hope Community Church, my name is Erica and we're going to talk about Joshua 22. So um, we're going to read through the majority of the chapter together and I'll just comment a few, on a few things along the way. Um, but right before uh, Joshua 22, all of the Israelite tribes get their inheritance. Um, and the last tribe to get the inheritance is the Levites. And then concluding chapter 21, it says, the Lord gave them rest on every side, just as he had sworn to their forefathers. Not one of their enemies withstood them. The Lord handed all their enemies over to them. Not one of the Lord's good promises to the house of Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. And then going on to 22.1. Then Joshua summoned the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, and said to them, You have done all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded, and you have obeyed me in everything I commanded. For a long time now, to this very day, you have not deserted your brothers, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. Now that the Lord your God has given your brothers rest as he promised, return to your homes, to the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. So the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, if you remember earlier in Joshua, um, were going to have their inheritance on the other side of the Jordan. So now that all of the battles are done and everybody has their inheritance, Joshua says, it's time for you to go back to your home. And this is like the final command or reminder that Joshua gives them. But be careful to keep the command and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to obey his commands and to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. So this just reminds me of the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, and with all your mind. Um, and that's what Joshua is reminding um, the Reubenites, Gadites, and half-tribe of Manasseh. So then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. So... All right, so we're going to skip down to verse 10. When they came to Gileath near the Jordan, the land of Canaan, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh built an imposing altar there by the Jordan. And when the Israelites heard that they had built the altar on the border of Canaan at Gileath near, Jordan, near the Jordan, on the Israelite side, the whole assembly of Israel gathered at Shiloh to go to war against them. So the... Israelites on on the other side of the Jordan saw this altar that the two and a half tribes had built and they basically thought that those two and a half tribes had abandoned um, the Lord their God and had stopped following him made this altar to serve the Baals um, and so they were ready to go to war so verse 13 the Israelites sent Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, to the land of Gilead, to Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him they sent ten of the chief men, one from each of the tribes of Israel, and each head of the family divisions among the Israelites' clans. When they went to Gilead, to Reuben and Gad, the half-tribe of Manasseh, they said to them, The whole assembly of the Lord says, How could you break faith with the Lord your God like this? How could you turn away from the Lord and build yourselves an altar in rebellion against him now? Was not the son of Peor enough for us? Up to this very day we have not cleansed ourselves from that sin, even though the plague fell on the community of the Lord. Are you now turning away from the Lord? All right, so the sin of Peor, that goes back to Numbers 25. And actually Phineas... Um, the son of Eleazar, the same priest, is in that story as well. So in that story, in Numbers 25, the sin that the Israelites committed was immorality with the Moabite women. And there was this plague that killed 24,000 Israelites because of their sin. They were worshiping Baal Peor. Um, and the way that that sin was... I mean, I guess the plague was stopped, was that um, Phineas actually took a spear and drove it through an Israelite and the woman, and that is what stopped the plague. So, basically, 
Phineas is remembering what happened before when Israel turned away from God and how terrible it was for all of the Israelites. And he's, I guess, furious, you could say, um, that his brothers would go across the river and forget everything that the Lord had done and turn their back on him. So picking up in verse 18, are you now turning away from the Lord? If you rebel against the Lord today, tomorrow he will be angry with the whole community of Israel. And if the land you possess is defiled, come over to the Lord's land where the Lord's tabernacle stands and share in the land with us. But do not rebel against the Lord or against or build an altar for yourselves other than the altar of the Lord our God. He's just pleading with them. Don't do this thing. You know it's going to cause harm to you and to the whole community. And just come back to the Lord. Um, so verse 20. When Achan, son of Zerah, acted unfaithfully regarding the devoted things, did not, the wrath, did not wrath come upon the whole community of Israel? He was not the only one who died for his sin. So that um, story is in Joshua. Joshua seven it's um this is when the israelites were still going to um kind of clear out the land they were still at war and a group of men went to to battle but 36 of them were killed by the enemies and that's not what happened when god's people went to war and god was with them when god was with them god delivered them um, but in this case 36 of them died and then um joshua was commanded by the Lord to figure out systematically who had sinned. And then Achan replied um, that it's true he had sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and he took plunder and he buried it under his tent. And then his punishment was that he and his sons and daughters and family and all of his stuff were, um, they were stoned and burned. And also the whole Israel was was punished in a way too because they had failed in that um, when they had to go to, to war so so um, the larger portion of Israel was thinking that the smaller portion the two tribes and a half were turning away from the Lord and that all of this destruction is going to come against them again so verse 21 it says then Reuben Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh were applied to the heads of the clans of Israel the mighty one, God, the Lord, the mighty one, God, the Lord, he knows. And let Israel know, if this has been in rebellion or in disobedience to the Lord, do not spare us this day. If we had built our own altar and turned away from the Lord to offer burnt offerings and grain offerings or sacrifice fellowship offerings on it, may the Lord himself call us to account. No, we did this for fear that someday your descendants may say to ours, what do you have to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? The Lord made the Jordan a boundary between us and you. You Reubenites and Gadites, you do not share in the Lord. So your descendants might cause ours to stop feeling, to stop fearing the Lord. That is why we said, let us get ready and build an altar, but not for burnt offerings or sacrifices. On the contrary, it is to be a witness between us and you and the generations to follow that we will worship the Lord at his sanctuary with our burnt offerings and sacrifices and fellowship offerings. Then in the future, your descendants will not be able to say to ours, you have no share in the Lord. And we said, if we ever say this to us or our descendants, we will answer, look at the replica of the Lord's altar, which our fathers built, not for burnt offerings and sacrifices, but as a witness between us and you. Far be it from us to rebel against the Lord and turn away from him today by building an altar for burnt offerings, grain offerings, and sacrifices other than the altar of the Lord our God that stands before his tabernacle. So the Reubenites, Gadites, and half-tribe of Manasseh were really, they built this altar as a reminder um, that they are God's people as well. They didn't build it to burn sacrifices or to disobey the Lord. It was an altar of a reminder. Um, so, verse 30. When Phineas the priest and the leaders of the community and the heads of the clans of Israel heard what Reuben, 
Gad and Manasseh had to say they were pleased. And Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, said to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, Today we know that the Lord is a witness between us, because you have not acted unfaithfully towards the Lord in this matter. Now you have rescued the Israelites from the Lord's hand. Then Phinehas, son of Eleazar the priest, and the leaders returned to Canaan from their meeting with the Reubenites, Reubenites Gadites, and Gilead, and reported to Israel. They were glad to hear the report and praised God, and they talked no more about going to war against them to devastate the country where Reuben and Gad lived. The Reubenites and the Gadites gave the altar a name, a witness between us that the Lord is God. So, this is a crazy chapter. Israel almost has a civil war just after um, they got all of their inheritance and the Lord had fulfilled all of his promises. Um, but I'm thankful for Phineas and the heads of the tribes of Israel that they went over and went to talk to them to try to understand what was going on. Um, otherwise, if they had just gone to war, wow, what would have happened? Um, but let's just be reminded as we go about our days um, to come back to the command and the reminder that Joshua gave them as they kind of parted ways. And that was to be careful to keep the commands and the laws that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave to you. This is it. To love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to obey his commands, and to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and soul. And so for the two, tri two and a half tribes, their way of reminder was to build that altar as a reminder of uh, that the Lord is their God. Um, so let's love the Lord our God and walk in all his ways, obey his commands and hold fast to him and serve him with all of our hearts and all of our souls. Have a great day.